Greetings, Slashaholics, and welcome to another episode of After the Slash. I am Sean Campbell. I am joined by the 80 Slasher Librarian, Josh LaRue. How you doing tonight? Doing good. Survived a tornado today, so yay. Didn't get, I didn't end up in Oz, so I'm good. Aw, that would have been cool, though. <laughs> yeah, right. I would have thought I was on drugs or something, but, you know, for the first five minutes. I'm like, this may slip something in, but whatever. Uh, we got a very special guest. John, you want to introduce him? Yes, we have horror author David Bergantino joining us. Um, how long has it been? Uh, 20 episodes since you were with us last? Something like that? Yeah, it's been a very long time. I'm so glad to be back. Yeah, we're happy to have you back. Uh, it'll be I interesting can... to hear your perspective on this. Oh, yes. I can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> I gotta t- of, you. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Speaking of tornadoes, um, I'll never stop trying to look up details about these Texas Chainsaw movies. I'm really, I'm really obsessed with this series. And I guess there was a scene with Dennis Hopper in part two where he was literally going to be like losing his mind in the hotel room and there were going to be chainsaws coming out of walls and like following him around the room and it was going to be really trippy and psychedelic. Apparently there I don't I don't know if there's ever going to be footage of that, but I would love if somebody unearthed that and tried to put it back in the film. That sounds super cool. Cuz there's another scene with um I think it's Leatherface, Bill Mosley and Drayton and they're all in the rolling meat van. And Drayton is driving, and he's yelling at Bill Mosley. And Bill Mosley's like, "You wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for the plate in my head. Kiss it, respect it." And he's like, "All right, all right." And he's like, kisses it, like, "Shut up and get ba- get in the back." <laughs> I, I, I wish they would have put that scene in there, just like having all of them bantering, kind of like Devil's Rejects. Mm-hmm. He's such a great actor. I love Bill. Everything he, uh, I love him in Repo and Devil's Carnival, the musicals, the rock opera, and the musical. Oh, Repo, I loved. Yeah, Repo is amazing. Uh, I was going to tell you before we got into like the talk of this, David. I just I've been narrating uh, book number two, I guess, from the Tales of Terror series. Yeah, they really yeah. they really messed up by not having you there for the whole series. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it was more like he, well, he came first, so it was like they were like, oh, uh, I'm I, I, I'm glad I got I, I still haven't read read the other books I'm I'm glad I got my shot and that people people seem to like them yeah they're not it, they're not it's not bad it's 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 a pretty good story it's just not like it doesn't have the Freddy vibe it kind of has a Freddy's nightmares like the TV show like an episode of that kind of mm-hmm. vibe to it more than like Freddy's mentioned and stuff but I don't know. Uh, I just I, got a I, hold of Freddy's Nightmares. Problem is, the quality is so bad. It looks like it was recorded with a donut, so I, I, I can't <laughs> quite, I can't quite hear a lot of the dialogue, and it's really grainy. So I'm like, do I really want to just push through this entire thing and say I'm a fan, or do I want to just say I tried? Um, I'm not really sure how I want to play that one out. <laughs> oh man, I had the pilot of that on VHS. I checked it out from the library years ago and forgot I had it. And I lost it. I bet that thing's worth money at this point. VHS. Well, it's funny you say that because that was Tobey Hooper, Texas yeah. Chainsaw, that directed that first episode. And there's our segue right there. <laughs> it, it happened earlier than normal, but it is here. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Segways are for kids. So uh, David is our honored guest. So we're going to start with him. I'm sure we're going to end up talking about all the Chainsaw movies, or at least the ones we've seen. But the, the elephant in the room tonight is the Texas Chainsaw Halloween 2018 clone that just came out on Netflix. Uh, what's your take on it? We'll, we'll all rate it at the end, but uh, what, what are your opening thoughts on the movie? It, it had some fun moments, but overall it felt a lot like Halloween Resurrection where they were trying really hard to hit current youth culture. With this time, it was it was in influencers with a setup that made absolutely no sense to me that they would get themselves in that situation for that mm-hmm. kind of money, and then and then it, it had a healthy healthy dollop of Halloween reboot by bringing back a, an obsessed character from the original uh, movie, and there were some fun moments and there were some great kills. Um, a lot of stuff that didn't make a lot of sense to me, but and some beautiful cinematography. I thought there was some some. It was a really pretty movie for the most Especially part. The sunflower field. Yes. Well, you know, there was a sunflower field. There was that one shot where 
after he kills the people in the van, where he sort of rises up from the sunflowers. I love the sunflowers, except for that shot seemed badly composited on my TV. Like where he's holding the face up? Well, where he just kind of... <laughs> where he just sort of stands and it's just him and a sea of, of sunflowers at okay. night. And it just, maybe it was my TV just, it blew up wrong. And, and it just looked like he was, he was like copied and pasted with like tape onto the scene. <laughs> but, you know, I had my fun, but I, it, it wasn't, it wasn't my fave. What are your opening thoughts, Sean, before we dive into it deep? First, okay, I heard this movie, I heard about it years ago, and they the opening premise was going to be, like, a morbidly obese guy named Kenny is Leatherface, and he watches TV, and he's being watched over by a caretaker. I don't know what the fuck kind of description that was, but it's all this movie had for years. And then I saw that uh, Fede Alvarez you know, he worked with the Evil Dead remake, was going to be attached to this, and I was really excited about it. Um, but then I didn't hear anything for the longest time, and then suddenly there was a little trailer, and it was saying, hit Netflix in a month, and I was really excited. Um, as per usual, I'm going to go, I'm going to explain this movie in my sandwich format. I'm going to say some good stuff, I'm going to go with all the bad stuff, then I'm going to end it with something good. So it's going to be that kind of sandwich. So let's start with what's good. I love the cinematography, um, the pe- the got the composer in in the original composing of the 1974 film, they went to a slaughterhouse and they heard just hammers cracking, squealing, doors slamming, you know, and they incorporated that into the score. And this composer did the exact same thing. It's a very unnerving, brutal. I mean, you're not going to be listening to this in the car driving home unless you're me, which that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> just pumps me up for the day, you know. Uh, and my food service work. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> this is where the sandwich start, came from. Um, let's start with what I don't like, or let's go with what I don't like. Um, yeah, I don't like how they turn Leatherface into a Michael Myers, where he's a 70 year old man. And don't get me wrong, I mean, some people who work on farms, some people who are really strong can probably have that physique. But he was taking bullet after bullet. They were bashing him, slashing him, and he drowns, and suddenly he's completely fine. Completely just runs off the screen. I just, I don't, I don't buy that. They should have, it was like in part three, when they crack him in the skull, his head bursts open, and he's completely fine at the end because they want to make sequels. It's like, either kill him or don't. Like, maybe he could have taken, maybe it was like uh, Friday the 13th part three, where he took an axe to the head, but it's like, I can buy him surviving one more movie, or maybe to the shoulder, like in part two. But that, like, those are fatal. Those are all fatal kills. And I couldn't relate to a lot of the characters. And Sophia posed a question to me after the movie was done, which is fair. She says, would this be a good movie if it wasn't called Texas Chainsaw Massacre? And I said, I don't think I would have been as mad, but yeah. it still has a lot of gaps. Um, mm-hmm. But let's end with something else I like. Uh, there was an interview with the director, and they were asking him, what do you think people are going to think of the movie? He goes, hey, people are going to fight me on the bus scene. Bullshit. That would happen. I know people in Texas. I know people with cell phones. The bus scene would actually happen. I don't care what y'all say. I will defend that scene forever. And now I'm just like watching the movie. Where's the bus scene? Where's the bus scene? And then I see it, and I'm like, I buy that. I oh. buy live streaming a killer on a bus. Sure. It's um, trained to be with a chainsaw. Right? Yeah, so it was a good movie. It was just, I don't know if it's Texas Chainsaw. Because Texas Chainsaw is supposed to be about families and meat. And this really wasn't about that. This was a revenge mission with a guy that had a chainsaw. He could have used any weapon besides a chainsaw. That felt really out of place. Um... I, it just didn't feel like Texas Chainsaw to me, even though it had Leatherface and a chainsaw, and I appreciate trying to put it in a new setting, but it's kind of like when they did Bates Motel and they put it in modern day. I don't think you can do that story in modern day. I think it really exists like, like in the 30s to 60s. Like Same with Chainsaw in the 70s and 80s, like really not further than that. 
My opening thoughts on it would be that they missed a great opportunity to like have a really good ending to the series here. Uh, I look at it like this. Imagine if in Halloween 2018, the first scene that Lori finally gets to take on Michael, Michael just guts her, you know, like they had this build up the first movie colliding with this movie. There's a lot of stuff that didn't make any sense. And as we break down the movie tonight, we'll get into like every detail, like, uh, the orphanage and stuff like that. Uh, I got some questions about that, but like, it just seemed like such a build up to bring the survivor back from the first movie. <clears throat> and he just walks past her. doesn't remember. Uh, I thought she was really going to do more. And she's like 70 as well, you know, and she gets like chainsawed through the gut, but somehow sticks around to give some advice, <laughs> you know, uh, comes back from the dead for that. Um, yeah, yeah I, uh, I, so it, the, my my sense of that character it almost feels like they they shot this movie and then Halloween reboot came out and they were like oh we need this too and and like added that to it. See, my theory is that like maybe they were going to make a conclusion with this like they already had that lined out like a big uh, they were going to kill him in this you know or something and Netflix or whoever is like no we want some more you know we want to do this so they had to change it but they had a chance to really have a big showdown and really go go back to the first movie and end it good uh i told my wife uh after he fell into the water for the last time i was like the movie's gonna end regardless with him waving the chainsaw over his head in some form or fashion okay they, they, okay they want to keep this going regarding that scene would you would you say that that scene is similar to friday the 13th when they clearly killed jason and then he pops up out of the pier like they always have to do that dream sequence at the end that's what i thought it was like when yeah. when he when he killed those two but then the next scene is him walking down the road to go find a house to live in so i was like it, it kind of it killed the whole it, i was think it was not, a dream aspect was that not the house at the end no, one? that that was um I was about to say Lori. That was Sally's new farmhouse that she got the call and then she went cuz I don't know where the hell his house is. I don't know where Drayton is. I don't know where any of the family is. It's like it yeah, completely retcons. Am I wrong? I thought this one ignored all the sequels and it was like supposed to be like the only real sequel to it. Yeah, so. but that, that that I think that farmhouse was her house, not the yeah. original chainsaw house. But why okay. didn't he go back there like years ago? Well, my, my my feeling is that there were a lot of masters being served in the creation of this movie, and I have some I have some insight because I was trying to get a video game off the ground when this was being made, and now certain things I was told at the time make sense now that I've seen this movie. But in general, you look at some of these elements that that ape, particularly Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth. In fact, this is more of a almost the beginning of another slasher movie series and not a Texas Chainsaw. You just, you, you, it feels like there's a lot of, oh, we need one of these and we need one of these and we want to make sure we've got that. And then what you get is a bit of a taffy pull of what maybe could have been a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie at, a in, a, in a third draft and not a sixth. Yeah, they had a real chance to make something great with this and really, really bring it back. Or, you know, bring it back and end it in a good way. And I'm, yeah, you know, we'll, that's not going to be in the cards according to what I was going through with the video game. That was not happening. I hate to hear it. Uh, they're actually pulling uh, Leatherface from the Dead by Daylight game uh, pretty soon. Uh, if, if people own them already, they can still play them. But they're going to quit selling them, I guess, because of the new chainsaw game or whatever. Is that what you were talking about? The Texas chainsaw game? No, no. Uh, that's oh. one of the that's why I'm that's one of the reasons why I'm not making a Texas chainsaw game. But the one that they're making is going to be like Friday the 13th, which yeah. is a async multiplayer. I was doing I was I was working on getting the rights for a third person adventure story based game more like uncharted with texas chainsaw massacre so and and to tell the tell a story with that and they kept urging me to to extend it into town and start to reveal the secrets of a, of a town because we never made it into town in the in the original set of movies 
And now I know why they were pushing me because they 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 were drafting off of what they were coming up with with this. Oh, gotcha. You're coming into town. A campaign game it would be a lot more fun. I I, I don't mind the asymmetrical one on four or whatever, but or one on eight. But it, I would like stories with these, you know, to play through. That would have been fun. It would have yeah, been really cool. Or, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 that's 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 the thing is is uh, you know in Dead by Daylight and in these async games. I mean, these are these are props. This is this is a you know Halloween Funhouse stuff. In in a campaign based game, in a story based game, you're you're going through a more cinematic storytelling experience, and that's what I want to do. I wanted, and that's all I would, you know, it's part of being a writer, I guess, is you want to tell stories of this stuff and not just get the thrill of running around with a chainsaw and have that be it. Yeah. I would have liked uh, one of those, some of those games where you, there's multiple options to click. Like, you just picked up a hitchhiker and he took your picture. Do you pay him or do you refuse? Okay, you refused and he cut you. So, you know, it's just like, I would have loved to have played a game like that where there's different consequences based on different ways you interact with people. They did that with Walking Dead really well with the the comic material, with Telltale. Right. And I always thought a slasher, like, like Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, done with Telltale would have been really good, but they never went that far into horror with it. Um, right. and why that is, I, I could fill an entire other show about <laughs> uh, that I probably shouldn't ever have let anybody air, but yeah. Um, uh, and the thing is, is with these, with these games, um, what they won't do, I know we're getting far afield, I'll, I'll, I'll cut this short, but what they won't do is do the async game and the adventure game. They will, they only have room in their lives for one. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Product placement. Sorry, John. <laughs> oh, what do we got so, there? Slasher mug. Ah, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Check out, the, check out the store. Get yourself a mug. It's in the link. It's been a while. It's been a while since uh, we did one of these shows. I had to blow the dust out of it. <laughs> um... All right, let's uh, let's start at the beginning of the movie, and Sean is like a walking encyclopedia for Texas Chainsaw. Uh, so let's guide from beginning. Let's start a discussion at the beginning and go from there, uh, and get our thoughts uh, on how the movie played out. Sean, you want to start us at the beginning? I don't exactly. I mean, I, I watched this shit when it came out. I think it was when, when did this come out? Was it like beginning of February or something? Yeah. yeah. Like okay. I, I, don't mean, remember, I don't remember. Oh, 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 I remember how it started. Yeah. Um, it goes over the events of the original movie, like a crime that was never solved. Which I mean, they kind of did with the opening of the 2003 one with the case files in 2003. But I think they did that a lot better. But you know, like right here, Texas Chainsaw. It's marketed where there's t-shirts of what happened in 73 and they never did find the killer and i I think that would have just been a lot more interesting if we had gone along that direction of she's still searching for this guy but then we find out that he's just been chilling in a orphanage for the last 40 years i I don't buy it like where is the family where is the farmhouse like why the why is he in this orphanage why did she take in a grown man uh that just a lot of that really doesn't make sense to me. It really did feel like Michael Myers or something. Exactly. Uh, or maybe, or point. maybe Jason. Like Jason found another motherly figure or something. I could even buy yeah. that. Someone who treated him like mother. But Leatherface, really? I didn't get that at all either. Like, not, it kind of reminded me of Batman Forever, where it's like <laughs> Robin is clearly twenty one, and why is Bruce taking in this twenty one year old? Uh, I didn't question it when I was a kid because I just fucking loved the movie. But someone brought that up, and I'm like, he was like twenty one, wasn't he? Uh, all right, take care of the kid. Kid? Question mark. Yeah. Um, but I just, and then she's like, you know, don't go in my bedroom, and she has his chainsaw in the wall to deter him from using a chainsaw. I just. Why would he use a forty-year-old chainsaw? Like in the two thousand three, in the two thousand thirteen one, he clearly was doing that a lot and using because it's a different chainsaw, has a different motor. Uh, I just th- this is what I was really getting at when I talked to Sophia. I feel that this movie 
is like a reboot of the 2013 one. Because if you think about it, the 2013 one ignored all the sequels and branched directly off the original one. It features a solitary Leatherface who, after having a woman around him killed or died, goes on a murder rampage with a chainsaw in a town. Old man Leatherface. I, I felt like this one had more in common with the 2013 one than the original. But mm. I think re regardless of some of the flaws, cell phones and all, I think that the 2013 one was better, especially considering that the 2013 one takes place right after the original and goes on for 15 minutes with the original characters, then makes the jump. That would have felt... I would have appreciated about 15 minutes of what the fuck happened to Leatherface before 74 and here. I would exactly. have appreciated how that. They could have, they could have filled in the gaps how he ended up in this home. It made no sense. Uh, I, I couldn't make heads or tells of that. And we didn't have any characters I really cared for. The only character I even remotely cared for was the girl that survived the high, the, the shooting. And I thought the guy in the town was, was going to be a very interesting character. He was mysterious. There was something going on with him. I thought he might be connected, like when he took the keys away. Yeah. But, but it never went anywhere, you know? It just, I was like, oh, he's part of the family. He's related to Leatherface. I guarantee it. Or he's one of the orphans that was raised by her. Nope. Just some random guy. Yeah. It's so family. Ahead, the whole series is about family, and none of these people are connected to Leatherface, and it really just feels weird. And frankly, not particularly connected with each other either. I mean, I mean, okay, so you've got that woman in the orphanage, but why she took him in isn't really clear because that whole thing doesn't make any sense. Then there's the guy who I agree I thought was going to turn into something, and then nothing. And then, like, he's the one who takes the lug nuts off the tires on the bus yeah, or something like yeah, you know. yeah, something. But he's just McConaughey. Right, and then and then there was not one other character that I felt even vaguely sympathetic for, or even liked in almost the entire movie. Yeah, and I could have liked Sally, could have liked Sally, but I found her presentation to be too Laurie Stroud and too just just too much that for her to be her anymore, and just thought, oh, they just needed that. So I couldn't, there wasn't a lot for me to hold on to in terms of, you know, rooting for anybody. The way she walked off screen when she got the phone call made it feel like if she ran into Leatherface, it's pull the trigger, pull the trigger, not sit there and talk for 10 minutes and worry about if he remembers or not. Well, it's like you that know? meme I sent you where it's like uh, Thanos and Scarlet Witch, you took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I thought... Okay, kill me for this, Sean, if you want. Because you know I'm not a big fan of Part Three, which is your favorite. I actually like the new generation one uh, more than this one. Okay, Did you see the director's cut of Next Generation, though. No, I have not. I'll have to check that it's, out. It's actually a little better. It adds more backstory to Renee Zellweger's character that kind of fleshes out how she ends up at the end. <laughs> That's the other one I haven't seen that I really want to see. See, I feel like. In that one, Matthew McConaughey's character, I thought that's how this character in this town was going to end up. We we're going to find out he's connected, you know, and instead we get a scene where it's like he had no idea that this crazy dude was living upstairs two buildings down from him and was capable of doing this shit, you know. Now, I will say him getting his leg broken backwards, that was brutal. Oh, the kills and the gore are absolutely right. stellar in this movie. Like the wrist getting snapped and then him stabbing him with the with the bone. Yeah, that was I all. That. I love that. Or the throwback so, to Friday the 13th Part 7 when he knocks her down the stairs, hits the ground so hard, crashes through the ground into the basement. God damn. And I did enjoy the chick that tried to play dead in the van because that was like something, a real, I made a note of that. That's what a real person would try to do at first, you know? Right. Just kind of, uh, I'm dead. Go on, you know, but uh, brutal kills, good gore. The bus scene was a little over the top. It it would have fit. I don't know more scream or something. I don't. It just didn't feel like Texas Chainsaw to me. You right. know. Uh, yeah, there's like they think the bus is going to protect them. I mean, that was. And what did he do to stop the bus exactly? Did he chainsaw a tire 
All I know is the bus was driving by and then it just stopped because he hit it with the chainsaw. I forget. I don't recall. It was yeah. They're like trying to escape and he's in an alley. And the bus is driving by, the chainsaw revs, and then all of a sudden the bus doesn't work anymore. Uh, that didn't make a lot of sense to me. So did anyone, okay, did anyone in this movie know his name was Leatherface? Because at one point she goes, hey, Leatherfuck. Oh, Where did I didn't that even... come from? Oh. I, I was like, did she see that on, like, the, the, or the clips from the gas station in the beginning? Like, the man called Leatherface, like... But then again, how did she a hundred percent know that was leather? I just that was a that was it's a weird of, comment to throw out. Like I almost was like, "Do your thing, cuz." That's going into the same category of who took Jason Voorhees' picture. Uh, you know, in the New Beginning, when they're showing the picture of Jason, uh, and it's like at Camp Crystal Lake. It's a, it's like from one of the movies. It's like who took that snapshot? <laughs> that's Jason a good point. I didn't think of show. that. <laughs> no, well, it's, like a sp- it's like you know Peter Parker taking pictures of Spider Man kind of thing. It's like you climbed a flagpole to get that. <laughs> I will say the foreshadowing was a little. It's I, I swear that I'm seeing more and more of this. They're dumbing movies down for people. I'm seeing it in so many things. It's it, they're making stuff way too obvious. The corkscrew. As soon as you see her buy that corkscrew at the beginning of the movie. You know that's going into Leatherface at some scene, and that that's how she's going to get away. Like a su- the camera zoomed in on it and everything. I was like, "That's going into Leatherface's something, and she'll escape." And that's how she escaped the bus. I mean, it was it was very predictable. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, I would have uh, liked more if it was like Nancy in A Nightmare on Elm Street, where she actually has to put stuff together based on stuff she finds in different houses and sheds. Like, I would have liked that a lot better rather than, you're right, go for the, the low-hanging fruit. Yeah, and then chopping that low-hanging fruit up a lot. A lot, a lot. <laughs> I feel like my review of this movie was like, compliment other compliment and i just squirted mayonnaise all over it so you can't even recognize this sandwich anymore i wanted to like it i really did want to like this movie because they they brought i mean i know it wasn't the same actress or whatever but they brought back a character from the original and i was like okay maybe they can end it well you know and then they kill her so fast and and she she's been preparing for 50 years and that's the best she could do but then to make it even worse when the other when the girls go in for the shotgun, all of a sudden the seventy year old lady had survived that for like ten minutes laying there, you know, being eviscerated with the chainsaw. Um, what did you think of that, David? Like two yeah. over the top? What do you think? You no, know, I, I mean when it came to that kind of stuff, I just kind of rode with it because frankly that was the only pure thing about it, if you ask me, was the over the topness of the kills. Um, you know, so I, so I ran, I totally went with the bus scene, even with the streaming. And I totally went with, oh, especially when the guy got killed and especially when, you know, stabbing somebody with his wrist. I love that stuff because you know what? I I can grab onto that because I didn't have to think. I just had to enjoy. Okay. But when I think about, when I think about the setup of these, influencer restaurant people who bought this town and arbitrarily bring a bunch of people out who are supposed to give them millions of dollars without knowing anything about their destination and blah. And I just start to go, I start to, my brain starts to buzz and I go, just give me a broken wrist to stab someone with, please. Right. And there's like 50 of them. They're just going to let one guy take their keys away. I mean, you can't, you can't get you all just get your keys back and go. Well, but I think that I think there was this whole point about how these were all the the you know there's some commentary about how the, all these fey useless city slicker influence how useless social media culture is and all this other, and how 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 relevant it is in a situation like that. But see, that's to me the kind of way too over the top hitting something on the head way too hard because we think we're saying something when. And just come on, let's just go kill someone. If that's what if that's what you're going to do, then let's just focus on the killing. Oh yeah, the that's special fine. effects and gore were great. Uh, the what? chick getting the the special effects and the gore and oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm I'm all it just didn't seem to it didn't really fit the franchise for me. Uh, it seemed it, more, there's more slow kills in the past movies. You know, like 
somebody being hung up on a meat hook, uh, you know, a leg being cut off and all that. But it was fun. I did have fun with the bus scene. I had fun watching Leatherface step over the dead guy's phone. And you see all the comments and everything coming through on the video. It's like, okay, I want to know what's going on over there, you know, like after this happens. Right. I want to see the aftermath because uh, this is 2022. He's not going to be able to go live peacefully in this house he found at the end of the movie. There's video of him killing all these people. They're going to go find him, you know. Right. He was, he was never quite as outlandish, although I've missed some some of the movies, but it's never quite as outlandish as Friday the 13th, which you, you sort of, the whole business of him popping back up was actually part of the joke of it. Like, whereas I never got that sense from Texas Chainsaw. I'm, you know, the second one notwithstanding, the first one is really raw and violent and and there's a groundedness to it. And I even feel that way about uh, about the, the first reboot, the 2003. Mm-hmm. Even though mm-hmm. it's slick and beautiful, I think it it is its own sort of raw uh, that that subverts the beauty of it, you know, by being also really violent and, and surprising you when it's being gory, like the slow pan over the guy's body, and then you you're like, oh, he's pretty sexy. Oh, his legs missing, blah, you know, stuff like that. I loved about that movie. This, this, I think that the question: if this wasn't Texas Chainsaw Massacre, would you like it? It's how I feel about Ang Lee's Hulk. If it were an Asian martial arts film about monsters and not a Hulk film, his version of the Hulk would have been a great movie, but not a good Hulk movie. Okay. In the same vein, yeah. Would have been a perfectly enjoyable slasher film, but not an authentic Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. It's kind of like a Victor Crowley uh, hatchet uh, type. It's fun to watch, fun to rent on Redbox or something, watch on Netflix. But it does the Texas Chainsaw name, you're right, it doesn't fit. Kind of like uh, if they hadn't called the Child's Play remake Child's Play, if they called it yeah. something else, it would have been a fun AI gone bad movie or 98 yeah. Godzilla. That would have been an ama- That would have been a great summer monster flick, but they had to ruin it by calling it Godzilla. If it was called anything else, it would not get the hate it has today because it's actually a fun monster flick. You know, there's some intense scenes, especially at the end when the eggs are hatching and stuff. Uh, but you're right. It's whenever they they put a name on something that just doesn't fit. It just it ruins it. You know, well, you can't get a name. That. What the fuck is up with the title? They just took the out of it. Like what? I just the the the, the titles of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series frustrate me. Like we have a remake. We're gonna call it the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I okay, yeah, it's a remake. But then it's like, oh, we're gonna have another movie. It's gonna just it's just gonna be called Texas Chainsaw 3D. Oh, well, we're just gonna subtract letter, and then, oh, and then we're gonna have Leatherface, not to be confused with Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre three. We're gonna have a <laughs> prequel to the original that ignores the other ones, just called Leatherface. Then we're gonna make another one. It's a sequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but this one's just called Texas Chainsaw. Ma- like, who the fuck? Oh, is it? It's not hard. You could have called it Revenge of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You could have called it Return. Like, Returned, you could have called it Texas Trinity. Like, just something. Uh, like, this is just a lazy fucking uh, title. You could have called it TCM uh, 9 or te- Texas Chainsaw or T40, Texas well, 40 years later. It, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a trend in movie naming. I, I mean the the other the other biggest example of that is Suicide Squad. James Gunn's Suicide Squad is Suicide Squad, whereas the first movie was the Suicide Squad. But there's these just these what well, part of what they're doing is they're trying they're they're trying to make it seem like it's not a sequel. They want it to feel from the poster perspective, particularly for newer audiences who vaguely understand Texas Chainsaw Massacre but maybe aren't familiar with it. But they're just they're they're re rebranding it. And but you know, it's just a little different. I I if they had given it a subtitle, if they'd done any of those other tricky things, it would have seemed like a sequel. And that would have diminished it in people's eyes. Because sequels... Even so, it it makes it really confusing where someone says, I saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, well, what'd you think? Well, I hated this part. Oh, so you saw 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, I saw the Texas. No, you didn't. You did. There was not a the. My, there maybe there was a gap between chain and saw, and, which differentiates it for the seventies one. Like, god damn, this is confusing. Like, like in my <laughs> iTunes library, the soundtracks have to be alphabetical, and this is a goddamn nightmare. They are all TCM one, two, three, four, five, straight down to nine. Otherwise, Texas Chainsaw Massacre has to go before the, which ain't gonna happen when I'm jamming out to my playlist. <laughs> We've got. We've got what? We've got three Halloweens, uh, three Hall- or two Halloween twos. I mean, that the Halloween franchise is doing the was doing the same thing. Friday the Thirteenth just goes in one direction. That, it has to be the easiest out of all of them. Thank you. Nightmare on Elm or Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, wasn't wasn't too hard to follow either. Um, uh, I guess if they reboot that, it's going to be called Nightmare on Elm Street instead of a Nightmare. You know. Or, Don't or, give them any ideas. Uh, Keep that to yourself. Could, edit this out. It, this could be the Nightmare on Elm Street. There's an extra the floating around. I want to, David. Will you help me make my movie that I'm going to do? Where I'm taking the Chucky remake idea. Remember we talked about it before uh, on an yeah. episode. The the Fred Eye, and let's just make it. Let's just do it. Let's let's get it out there. Yeah, let's we might. that series. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, so we pretty much destroyed this movie. Uh, <laughs> massacred. We, we massacred the, ma- the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Remember the good old days when it was just going to be about a fat guy named Kenny who watches TV and it was going to be called Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Remember the good old days where it was like a one-sentence description? The next <laughs> movie they make is going to be called Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> just work your way down to Massacre. <laughs> it massacre. reminds me of uh, there was a pencil for school. It said too cool to do drugs, and then it said, cool to do drugs, and then yeah. to do drugs, do drugs, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's going to be Texas that's Chainsaw awesome. Massacre. And then okay. We're just going to end up with ass. <laughs> <laughs> acre. <laughs> then a, ass acre. Um, it's a totally different yeah. movie. Totally different I, movie. You see <laughs> ass I, I think I saw that at, uh, on, on a on the uh, pay per view on a ho- at a hotel once. Ass Acre one or two. Which one was it? Was it the Ass Acre or was it Ass Acre? Ass Acre three oh, D. I-, <laughs> I don't think I want to see that in three D. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm crying over here. Oh god, three D. Right, so what's your rating for Ass three D? What if they put That's it in 4D? Three D. No. Uh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start. What, sorry, what are we doing here? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start the ratings off. Um, the movie did have its fun moments. It was confusing as shit as far as the continuity goes. If Alex, if you're watching, I said continu- continuity, not continuity, like I messed up. He's giving me shit over that to this day. Uh, messed up one time. Um, but yeah, the, if they hadn't messed up the continuity and it actually explained a few things and if they had actually went all in on uh, the survivor from the first movie's story and like had a real showdown between the two of them and actually finished, made this the end, the book end. And killed him at the end. I, I think it could have been a great movie, but unfortunately, they went in a different direction. It's confusing as shit. There's characters you think are going to be super interesting, and they're just fodder for the chainsaw. Um, the the whole story with with what's her name? What's the survivor's name? Shelly or whatever was that? Sally. It Sally. 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 Yeah, it was Sally. Like I was excited to see what was going to happen with that. That was so disappointing. Um, then I really thought they killed him for a minute there. But whenever he fell back in the water and they didn't just keep shooting him or something or make sure, I just knew he was going to end up waving that chainsaw around. You know, they were going to go that route. And they, it was it was too predictable. Uh, they, they had a chance to do something great here. They failed. Uh, I'll give this one two out of five. I'll give it one out of five, but it did have some really good special effects. And some fun moments for a slasher film. I would put this in the category of Hatchet, uh, like Victor Crowley and stuff. The the biggest problem with this movie is what we all said, the title. Uh, yeah, so two out of five for me, guys. David? 
Wow. I I will go <clears throat> I will go as high as a three on this one, only from the standpoint of as a movie that we, well, like you said, as a movie that wasn't a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, there were some there were some good kills, and I, I enjoy a movie that's stocked full of good kills. But other than that, as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, as even a story that made sense or a story that had characters that I I was rooting for or felt anything for, okay, maybe a back just dropped down to two. Also, two. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of one more point before I give it a rating. I don't even know why I say that. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 regardless. But I will say one thing. Okay, I love the 2013 one. But you know one glaring problem was that she was a baby. By the year, she's supposed to be 40 years old. But she's like 25. Yeah. What if she was the What if they had kept her at 40 years old? And she moved away from that town to get away from the stigma and ended up in this town taking care of him. And she's like, you're not going to wear faces. You're not going to deal with that. We're just we're, we're going to be normal in here. And then the events of this movie happen while she's taking care of him. And she's 50 and he's 70. And then she dies. And then he finally just snaps because that's just too many figures he's lost in his life. I felt like that would have been more believable if they had kept the 2013 one in this, like, she cameos as the older woman who dies, so basically he skins the face of the woman taking care of him from the end of 2013. Okay. I think I would have felt better in my soul if they had done that instead of rebooting it again with a woman we've never seen before in a town we've never heard of in an orphanage that makes no sense. I feel like... I feel like the director was passionate. The composer was passionate. You know, a lot of people in this movie were very passionate, but yeah. somewhere along the way, it just stopped feeling like Texas Chainsaw and started feeling like Halloween reboot. I want to like it. I don't think I'll rewatch it anytime soon, but that is not stopping me from jamming out to the soundtrack because I feel like I can detach that like I listen to every Halloween soundtrack, regardless of what I think about the movie. So I will say two out of five. Better luck next time. Maybe if they spent more time on the title, they could have, you know, motivated themselves to do something different. Yeah, and like take the time to add the, for example. Add the, yeah. <laughs> it's, respect a, is, it's respect is what a, it is. A yeah. Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre would have been better. A Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a random one, you know? Oh, they can do an international series, and, it, and, and the, it's in France, so it's Le Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Or they can uh, give it the original title, Head Cheese. Paris, Texas. Head Cheese. The head Cheese Paris makes even less sense because he's not cannibalizing people. He's just killing people. At no point in this one is he trying to eat anybody, put people on hooks. At least they did that in the 2013 one. In right. the, 2000, the 2003 one is the best remake, reboot, whatever you want to, whatever it is. If they would have just taken more from that, mm -hmm. uh, I think they would have they would have done well with this one, but. There's one part that really made me laugh out loud, and that's when uh, Sally is laying there. She should have been dead like 20 minutes ago, but somehow she's still alive, and she's given the shotgun to uh, Shelly, right? Is that the one that was the one that survived Shelley, the shooting? Yeah, well, whatever whatever her name is. She's giving her the shotgun, and she says, don't run, because if you, if you run, you're going to always be running. And I, I laughed out loud going, actually, if you just wait like another five, ten years, I'm pretty sure this problem is going to take care of itself, you know? <laughs> it's, or, it's, not, it's, not, it's already been 50 years. I don't think she's going to have to run that long. <laughs> and the thing is, is, is she's, she's I clearly did not follow her own advice. I mean, she pretty much stayed in one place wanting the, only one thing for the last 50 years. Why did no, it take just so think, long to find him? <laughs> you know, she's so dedicated to it. I don't get it. You no, know, when Leatherface goes to kill people on the International Space Station, I will be waiting for Texas Chainsaw X. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. It, maybe, maybe I'll get taken out to dinner and get to name that movie, too. Hell yeah, and get the tagline. Or, or else, if, they don't, if they don't do something like that, we're going to end up with the one in like 15 years where he's Leather, like in, a, in an electric right. wheelchair. You know, the electric wheelchair massacre or something. If they're going to keep, you know, trying to make a direct sequel. 
Uh, running out of time, people. <laughs> they can have a. They can. They can. They can have. They can uh, um, has have, have a crossover with Wall E. <laughs> so tech, Leatherface is in one of those floating chairs, and then Wall E's over here, and <laughs> that would be better than what this movie was, honestly. <laughs> uh, Leatherface in space. Hey, there you go, Leatherface in space. It mm-hmm. rhymes. It's it, it flows off the tongue. It's good on a poster. Yeah. Let's, let's, we need Leatherface in space at this point because reboots and remakes, that's all they've done for like the past, what, four films or whatever? Right. Nobody's done it right since 2003. So Adam got close. Um, but this one, I was really let down. I watched it because I wanted to, because I know how big of a fan Sean is and I wanted to discuss it. And I, I wanted to like it. I did, man. But I just couldn't couldn't get behind it. I feel like y'all remember in the Water Boy. It's one of my favorite quotes, <laughs> where he goes, "Man, they can't let the Water Boy on the team. Everyone's gonna laugh at us. Everyone's already laughing at us. We ain't won a game since 1994." <laughs> 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 I'm just thinking of Texas Chainsaw. Man, there's a new movie coming out. Everyone's gonna laugh at it. Everyone's already laughing at it. We ain't had a good Texas Chainsaw since 2004. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you. Because I would, I would give 2003 like four out of five, man. Or I, you know, it was, it was almost on par with the original. Yeah. Uh, I really, um, yeah. really love that one. Uh, the prequel to it wasn't too bad, um, but it's forgettable. But the 2003 and the original, and part two are always going to be my favorites. Part two, just because I love, just the camp of it. You know, it, it worked. Right. Somehow that worked. You went from the first one to that camp, and it worked. They're, they're I both really wish classics. somebody would find All-American Massacre and make it happen. It's there. It's filmed. I uh, It makes me so frustrated that we'll, we'll probably never see it. No, we're going to end up seeing the American. Are you, are you familiar with that, David? No, I am not. Oh, we talked about it a couple times. Um, Right after Texas Chainsaw... Uh, Te- Text Chainsaw Massacre 2. You know Bill Mosley played Chop Top with the plate in his head? He gets slashed across the chest and he falls through a tube. Um, All American Massacre was filmed I think it was filmed by Tobey Hooper but I don't think they have the rights to the franchise because I know it was trying to be picked up by New Line. Uh, it's filmed. The entire movie is filmed. The guitarist, Buckethead, does the music for the movie. He plays Leatherface. Bill Mosley reprises Chop Top, who's been in a maximum security prison for 15 years, and now he's going to tell the story of what happened to lead up to them becoming, you know, Leatherface, Chop Top, Mm -hmm. him coming back from Vietnam. So in this movie, he plays a younger version of himself that actually has hair before he got shot in the head. And uh, online, there's a trailer, there's pictures. But the movie has never seen the light of day. I don't know. I think they huh. said it wasn't when they filmed it. It didn't have the correct rights, and whoever owns it doesn't want it to release it. But every year, people petition to try to get the movie out. It's called All American Massacre, and Buckethead's music for the movie. There's snippets on YouTube, and I, it just sounds like it would be absolutely incredible. And I just we need to get the hashtag going and, and yeah. get this movie get this movie made. Even Bill Mosley uh, is like, yeah, it's done. It's just. Somebody won't release it. That's the that's the whole holdup for decades. Well, if if uh, if Grizzly Two can get released, American Massacre can get released. Oh, you did it! You took all American. You took all from it. You just shortened the title. Oh, sorry, I was thinking of the reboot of it. Oh, okay. Uh, the no bad. Uh, yeah, guys, thank you. This has been a great discussion, David. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I really hope that you'll come on getting sidetracked uh, to talk with me and Alex. Uh, just talk about your career, all your projects you've done, what you're doing. What do you think? Think you might be up to that? I think I would. Awesome. So, fantastic. Alex, getting sidetracked episode four uh, will be hitting the channel sometime in the near future. We'll work it out. Uh, interview with David Bergantino. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Sean, thank you for the discussion. David, thank you for joining us. I'm glad. I thank you for for asking me back. This was a lot of fun, and I miss it. And I, I really appreciate you asking me back. Oh yeah, anytime, man. The door is always open. We love having you here. It's always a great discussion. Um, Sean, I was thinking um, 
in space or Leatherface in space, like in space, there's no one to hear you scream. And all I can think of is in space, a chainsaw wouldn't work because it needs air to work. <laughs> It'd be a lightsaber chainsaw, you know, like an energy. Ooh. <laughs> See, we're writing the movie. It's that would, be, the that would be the big scene, like the transformation scene, the the um the nanobot scene in, in Jason X. It'd be the moment where the the the, the gas powered chainsaw gets nano reconstructed into the, the laser chainsaw. Oh my god. It's there's the, there's the climax right there. And we would we would put that in the trailer with bot let the bodies hit the floor and make people think the whole movie is gonna be like that, but we'll save it for the last ten minutes. Right. And you know, yeah. Still, Jason X is still my favorite Jason movie ever. Very unpopular opinion. Um, it's, but it's it's a fun movie. It's a weird movie. It's a it, it was totally just like we got to make a movie. What do we do? Let's do this. <laughs> it's got all the ingredients of the original Friday the Thirteenth movies. It does. The kids are away from home, limited, almost no adult supervision, sex, drugs, and Jason. I mean. Yeah, instead of camp being out in the middle of nowhere, they're in space. But right. really, at its core, it was a Friday the 13th film all the way through. Yeah. Movie. I mean, Todd, uh, Todd did a fantastic job writing it. It was, uh, you know, we when we were talking about it, it was just, just like, okay, fuck it. We had, we had Jason versus Carrie. What the hell else are we going to do? And, and then that's, we're just like, oh, let's do space. Uh, okay, why not? <laughs> Exactly. And, I, you know, as much as we joked and shit on it, I would actually watch, just for the hell of it, a Leatherface in Space movie. I would, at this point. I would. And I would probably enjoy the hell out of it, if I'm being honest. Okay. I feel like Leatherface in Space would be like the Reavers in Firefly. Where they, like, skin people and pull them apart, like, with the hooks and everything. Like... You know, mm-hmm. I remember watching that show when they were always terrified of a ship left by the Reavers. Or oh, I think yes. that's what their names. I see mm-hmm. Leatherface as being like that, like on a traveling ship where he just like butchers people for for meat because you know they're they're running out of food in space. Oh, yeah, yeah it, their spaceship is basically the house. It's it's a slaughterhouse, and the family's in there. They got the table and everything. Still, man, let's do it. Somebody make that happen. Even if it's a fan film, do it, please. I want to wow. see it. Wow, Lost in Space meets uh, Leatherface. <laughs> danger, danger. <laughs> danger, danger, bad danger. reboot, Will Rogers. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much for watching. Be excellent to each other. And, uh, David, we hope we- to have you back very soon. Uh, I hope to come back very soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.